This episode is brought to you by Steelroot, a national leader in helping companies meet cybersecurity compliance requirements and prepare for CMMC. Their experienced team of engineers and consultants assist organizations of all sizes to implement and manage IT systems that meet the technical requirements in DFARS and CMMC. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I will be your host. And our guest today is Heather Engel. Hello, Heather, how are you? Hi, Dana, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right, thanks very much. Um, I've been working with information security for going on 20 years now. I started with the Department of Defense as a defense contractor, um, doing everything from database installs to information operations, a little bit of um, information assurance, um, and then I started working with commercial organizations um, right around 2013, 2014, doing cybersecurity incident response exercises, strategy and planning. Um, that was right around the time, if some of your viewers will, will recall, the first DFARS cybersecurity clause came out. That was in 2015. And so I've been working with NIST 800 and federal and defense acquisition clauses since then. Um, of course, keeping a close eye on CMMC over the last couple of years, but primarily working with commercial clients of all sizes um, to help them with understanding their compliance responsibilities, as well as implement a strategy to make this workable for them. So you are very well versed in all of this. So that's fantastic. <laughs> I've been doing it for a while. We have a good topic today that sometimes maybe doesn't get as much thought that really it needs to have. So we're going to talk about scope and responsibility matrix. All right, so our first question is, why might a company choose to use a managed service provider or enclave solution for DFARS or CMMC? Yeah, the really simple answer to this question is that a lot of the businesses that we work with are not in the business of IT. They're in the business of manufacturing or services. And so this isn't their area of expertise. And it can be very resource intensive, as we all know, to implement these controls, not even just the implementation, the interpretation, first of all, can be something that's beyond the abilities of what a lot of companies have in-house. Um, effectively, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so working with a managed service provider or implementing an enclave solution that you know is going to be um, is going to be right for protecting your information can be really useful. It can be a cost effective solution. Um, because remember, if you if you start to think about the costs of all the different tools that you might need to implement when you're working through these controls, everything from a SIM to a configuration management tool to um, malware, antivirus, all of those things, those packages can really start to add up if you've got kind of a do-it-yourself situation going on. And that may or may not be the route that you want to take. Yeah, and also getting the words of the wisdom from you know an expert in the area as opposed to trying to navigate the waters yourself. I think that that's 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 a, a, a tough road to hoe there. So speaking yeah. to a professional is definitely a good idea. All right. So what is a shared responsibility matrix, and why is it necessary? Yeah, this is something we recommend to all of our clients that are working with any kind of an MSP or within an enclave solution. We're, we see pretty commonly service level agreements, right? And this says if we're managing your systems for you. We'll let you know before we take it down for maintenance. You'll have a guaranteed uptime. That's also really common with cloud services. The shared responsibility matrix is a little bit different because what that's going to do is identify the tasks that are required and it's going to assign responsibility. So, for example, if we look at NIST 800-171 in the identification and authentication family, control 3.5.5 is a great example of one that requires both a policy decision and a technology decision. This is prevent reuse of identifiers. And so we have to not only define the period that we aren't going to reuse our identifier, but we also have to then implement a technical solution to make sure that that doesn't happen. So that's a great example of a control that's clearly a shared responsibility. As a business owner, I need to say, I'm not going to reuse identifiers for X amount of time. And, and very often, you know, the answer is we just don't reuse them. Um, but then I've got to figure out how I'm going to make that happen and, and what's the technology behind that. Configuration management is another good example, right? That's something that might be almost entirely the responsibility of the managed service provider, 
But in many cases, your company is going to have specific software or hardware that they have to use. And so you're going to have to work together to understand what those baselines are going to look like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we uh, kind of talked about this before, but just the idea of it being completely on the MSP, you can't do that either. And if somebody comes in and says, oh, we're going to take care of this 100 percent, that that's something that's that's impossible to do, because when you're putting people involved in anything, this is not just a technology uh, component of it. There's also the policies and the people and the devices and stuff like that. So be leery if somebody says that. Yeah. Steelroot, a national leader in helping companies in the defense industrial base with CMMC preparation and federal cybersecurity regulations. Big or small, Steelroot is here to help design, build, and manage IT. The Steelroot reference architecture is a secure, cloud-native operating environment built on zero-trust principles. Steelroot also provides managed cybersecurity, IT, and virtual ISSO services. Visit steelroot.us for more information. All right, so what are some things to watch for when evaluating solutions and how does the SRM help with that? Yeah, well, you just brought it up. You know, one of the one of the key things to watch out for is anyone that tells you that they're providing a 100% solution and you don't have to do anything, this is the easy button over here. That's always something to watch out for and you know that may be true. That might be the situation, but you've got to ask the question and you've got to really be able to pick that apart. And so an easy way to do that is to say well, let me see the shared responsibility matrix because you know your understanding or my understanding is that this requires both policy and technology. And so if your solution doesn't also include those policies, it's not a 100% solution. Um, obviously, you know we wanna look at things like the price. Um, there, there's gonna be wide variances in different levels of solutions. And you, know, you may need a, a smaller solution that um, uh, hosts your data one way or you might need an, a solution that encompasses your entire network. And, and that again, goes back to talking a little bit about what's in scope and what's out of scope. Um, price, obviously, you know, so many of our clients are, are really price conscious, but even as we start to work with some of the larger companies, you know, price is a key component for this. You wanna make sure that you understand what you're getting and that you're getting what you pay for. So finally, you know, the shared responsibility matrix really shows you what's going to be left to do. And that impacts all of the things that we just talked about. So, you know, if, if my solution or if a solution is that I'm evaluating looks like it covers, you know, 70 percent, it's good on the technology side, but I have to write all the policies myself or I have to hire someone else to do those policies, then that's going to impact my price. Right. Because even though I'm paying the MSP or the Enclave solution one price, there are additional costs that are going to be involved in that, either resources for me to do it myself or additional costs for me to pay someone else to do it. And so those are all things that are not deal breakers by any means, but it's a question of, you know, are you comfortable with the solution that you're getting and is it the right fit for you? Yeah, and really being aware of exactly where the responsibilities are, you know, where, where they are. If they're with you, if they're with me, you know. And, you know, this is one thing I always like in these videos is for people that are watching them to be able to take questions away and now know that they should be asking about that shared responsibility matrix because they, before they may not have even thought to ask that question. So that's a good question to be asking when you are smelling around talking to different MSPs. Yeah. You know, let's talk about this. So that might, that might be very helpful to somebody who's just hopping down this little CMMC road. Okay. <laughs> How will you know if a solution is good for your company? Yeah, we, we touched on a lot of these things already, right? So price is obviously going to be is obviously going to be one component of it. Do you feel comfortable with the solution provider is another one. How responsive are they to your questions? Do you feel like they can talk really knowledgeably, not just about the technical controls, but about the environment in which we live, right? We just had some some major changes to CMMC. You know, are the the providers that you're talking with aware of that? Do they maintain an awareness of what's going on in the community? Um, you know, and, and, and in the broader DOD arena. I think those are really important. You have to feel comfortable um, with the vendor's knowledge and they have to be really clear about what's being offered in their solution. That's where the, um, the shared responsibility matrix comes in. The other thing that we haven't touched on that I think is really important, and this goes back to scope, is you've accounted not only for your unique um, software and hardware and different things that you need for your business processes, but you've also accounted for unique data types. And so, you know, we know that there are specific requirements for working with CUI, 
But if I'm handling HIPAA protected data, or I've got personally identifiable information, maybe my company takes credit cards. Those are all some unique data requirements exclusive of what we're talking about with CMMC that I need to make sure I've accounted for in the security of my solution. Um, you know, GDPR is one now that a lot of companies are having to grapple with. And then we even have special categories of CUI, like ITARs and export control data that have their own special requirements in addition to what we're gonna need um, for CUI. And so beyond all of those things, you know, I think the biggest thing in identifying whether a solution is a good fit is does it work with your business process? You know, it, it could be the greatest solution out there, but if you have to completely re-engineer your operations in order to make that solution work, it might not be the best fit for your company. Um, we see this a lot with manufacturing where manufacturers have specific and unique requirements with some of their shop floors and, and the way that they do business. And it's not always a great fit for you know, a particular type of solution. So really make sure that you're accounting for your specific needs in terms of how you do business and, and how you produce whatever it is that you're selling, um, as well as the different data types that, that you might need to handle that are gonna be protected under this solution. Those are all excellent, excellent points. And I just want to focus on one thing that you said about making sure that the uh, whoever is helping you, it, that they how how they're keeping up to speed. Like you know, CMMC 2.0. How, how, when did they find out about it? How are they you know staying on top of things? Because there's going to be more changes, and you mm -hmm. want to make sure that whoever you're dealing with is somebody that's getting that information or readily looking for that information. You know what I mean? And trying to keep up to speed on a regular basis. So that was an excellent point that you, that you mentioned. Yeah. So with that, I would like to see if there's anything else you want to throw out there. This was very, very helpful information. Yeah, I mean, I think I would just close by saying it, it's always better to ask these questions, right? Because not only does that help you gauge um, how knowledgeable your potential service provider is, but you learn a lot from talking to them, you know, and, and this is information. We're, we're all in this community kind of together where sharing that information and, and getting to know um, who you like as a, as a potential service provider and what solutions are out there is, is really valuable, I think, as we go forward. And as you mentioned, there's so many changes happening mm -hmm. and we expect to see more changes over the next you know, six to nine to 22 months. So, so being able to, to stay on top of those is really critical, both for you and for your service provider. So that's a, I think that's one of the key takeaways um, you know, and the other thing really goes back to understanding your scope and understanding your boundary. What's going to be in scope and what's going to be out of scope? What are the things that you need to make your business run and, and to generate revenue? Because that's really what this is about, right? We're in business to, to generate revenue and we need to make sure that whatever our security solution is supports that and allows us to continue to do that. Yeah, absolutely. There's got to be a fine balance there. So yeah. Well, thank you very, very much for all of your expertise and all of your time, Heather. And this was very, very nice. And uh, we hope to have you back on another uh, episode. We'll talk about something else. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is great. All right, great. Well, thank you. And thank you to everybody for watching.